fun. So I'm going to explain how to fill out the retake for the My Superpowers quiz. I highly recommend submitting a retake attempt because not only does it highlight your mastery of the content, but it also reinforces everything that you learned and gives you practice in writing sentences with complete ideas and identifying key details. So the three questions on the retake are the three questions from the original quiz, but you're going to answer them using key ideas and details. So the instructions are to write the main idea and key details in response to each of the following questions. When grading this assignment, I'll be looking for mastered understanding of the incident, the response, and the reflection. So I'm looking for whether you can identify the ideas that will answer the question. I'm not looking for grammar or spelling or a perfect sentence. I'm just looking for can you identify the ideas that I'm looking for. And please only type in the blue sections. So if you type over here, it will delete the sentence. So please only type in the areas that are desi designated for you. So up here at the top, you're gonna write your name. And the first question says to describe the incident of the story. Incident is a vocabulary word. If you go back to your breaking down definitions assignment, you will see that it means the main event of a, the story. So think about the main event of the story, My Superpowers. What is the main event? I gave you guys some sentence starters here so you can use these as part of your sentence. The author, if we look back at the book, it says here, the author grew up on the north side of Chicago and was picked on by bullies. So he prayed for superpowers. Now, we're going to add some more detail to that. So what does he mean, picked on by bullies? Well, let's see. Oh, here we go. So on the cold days of winter, there were three bullies who would wait for him after school and would terrorize him by pulling off his cub's cap and teasing him. So that's a complete sentence, a complete idea. So let us write that in. So the author got bullied. This is the main idea. Now let's expand on the details of the story. So there were three bullies would steal his cub cap and toss it around to cheat him. So if we see here, this is just a short idea and then we expanded on the idea by talking about who was there and exactly what they did. So key idea number two, it got worse because, hmm, what do you mean the incident got worse? Well, let's keep reading. Ah, uh, here we go. So on this particular day in February, he was walking home with a girl named Anne Cohn, who just happened to be his goofy crush. Interesting. Um, and then right as he was walking home with his goofy crush, he was approached by Vernon and his friends. So I was so embarrassed, I began to cry. Crying in front of Anne Cohen made me even more embarrassed. So I see, this is how it got worse. So it got worse because the author was bullied in front of his crush. So we see here. The detail says that the author felt even more embarrassed because he was walking home with Anne Cohn. So in order to add more detail, I gave the setting and another person's name. He was walking home with Anne Cohn when he bumped into Vernon, the bully, who stole his again. So here we expanded a little bit more on the full idea. So he was walking home with Anne Cohn when he bumped into Vernon and then Vernon went and stole his cubs cap like he usually does. So this is the, the entire incident of the story. The author gets bullied but this particular day he gets bullied in front of his crush. Alright now what about the second question? 
And the second question says, how does the narrator's response change when Anne is around? So change is a really key word in this sentence because not only do we have to understand how he reacts, but we have to understand how he reacts in relation to what he usually does. So what does he usually do when he gets bullied? Let's see. So they pretend to give it back and toss it around in a game of keep away. It doesn't say that he does anything. So we're going to assume that he doesn't fight back. So let's start with that. So you can say, usually the author doesn't fight All right, and for our details, we're going to say the bullies toss around his Cubs cap but he's too scared to do anything. And it doesn't say this, but this is an inference. We're inferring that he doesn't fight back probably because he's too scared. All right, so how does this response change now? Let's see. All right, so he was so embarrassed, he began to cry in front of Anne. He was speechless with shame and anger and driven by rage. He did only what an insane person would do. He attacked Vernon Mountiful. This is a key sentence. This identifies the change. So here we see that instead of just backing down and being too afraid to do anything, he finally stood up for himself and he attacked Vernon. So how can we explain that? What did he do? He punched him in the chest and grabbed his cubs cap back. And then he chased them away and started screaming, punching, and flailing. All right, so those are some good details. So, however, on this occasion, he fought back. So the author punched Vernon and stole his cubs back. Then he chased them away by screaming, punching, and flailing. So we can see here this is what he did. He fought back. And this is explaining a little bit more about how he fought back. So he punched them and he chased them away by screaming, punching, and flailing. So here you're just giving me the idea. And then you're explaining to me what happened when this occurred. Who was there? How did it occur? Who was affected? How did they respond? All the de juicy details of it. All right. And the last question is asking... How does the narrator's writing as an adult connect to his bullying experiences as a child? So connect is the key word here because we have to understand what the narrator's experiences were as an adult, what he wrote about, and then how that relates to his experiences as a child. So we have to understand who he is as an adult and who he was as a child and try to connect those two things. So let's look. This story happens when he was a child. So we know that when he was a child, he was bullied. But what do we know about when he was an adult? Well, let's see. He became a writer. He went on risky adventures. And, oh, here we go. So it says that he wrote about people who had superpowers. And he made himself have superpowers. He says here, I had superpowers. All right, so he wrote this book called The Zack Files, and he wrote this book called Maximum Boy, and he made himself the superhero with superpowers. All right, so I know from this that when he was a child, he was bullied, but he wrote about him in stories as somebody with superpowers, so he changed himself a little bit. What about the bully? Oh, here we go. So the bully now, Zack, Vernon Mountiful was a fat, stupid kid who sweats a lot and thinks he's cool. All right, so now I know that the author made himself have superpowers in his writing. And 
one. Author made the bullies a victim in his writing. So what he did here was he switched the roles. So he made himself have superpowers and he made the bully be kind of this weak, helpless victim. So in the in maximum boy, the author gives himself radioactive superpowers. And now we have to relate this back to his childhood. So this is different from his childhood because he was bullied and wanted superpowers but didn't have it. So he gave himself what he always wanted in his stories. So what about this one? The author made the bullies a victim in his writing. So I know that in real life, the author was picked on by bullies. But in his writing, the bullies were weak and hopeless victims. So he changed their roles too. Instead of being these powerful, mean bullies, they were kind of these weak, hopeless victims. So his, bully, his writing connects to his bullying experiences because he took those experiences and he switched it around to make it what he always wanted it to be. So here we have completing the assignment together. I'm going to delete these answers because you should know them off the top of your head or you should be able to think of them on your own. But I'll leave some sentence starters. So I'll leave some words in here so that you can have some hints on what directions to take. All right, good luck on your retake of my superpowers. I hope that you guys do really well and are able to show just how much you learned from these three weeks of school. Thanks, guys.